Hey, let's welcome in pitching coach Justin Ramsey. He was uh, scheduled to be at Double A Bowie this year, which he was not with, under the original plan. Obviously, uh, COVID changed everything in March. But Justin, uh, the Bowie alternate site clearly pitchers and position players pitched, uh, you know, produced a lot of players that really helped the Orioles and showed some nice promise. And everybody I've talked to, from player to coach to Kendall to Steenstra, and now I want to hear your take, mentioned chemistry over there. You know, kind of was a really close-knit group of guys that helped each other, whether they were 28 or 19 or whatever. Is that what you experienced? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> it was a really good group of guys in terms of ready to show up and work every day. Um, it, was, it was really impressive to watch them go about it. didn't matter whether they were – you know, the guys coming down, the guys trying to make their way up, or the guys that were there truly to work. Everyone was interacting. Everyone was talking. Everyone was helping. Um, and the energy was consistent throughout, which to me was really impressive. When you consider, you know, you're playing simulated games. At best, you have six position players out there at a time. Maybe a coach is standing in there. A lot of times you're using the technology or, or your eyes to say, hey, that's probably an out or that's probably a double. And trying to keep the energy in the games that way and then all the, the um, work leading up to it. It was hats off to the players for, for keeping that going. And you could see the results of the guys that went up. It was, it was fun to watch. Before we started taping, we were talking about the COVID restrictions and the coaches. It really wasn't like you could just go out with all the other coaches every night and have dinner and talk about the day. Uh, you were kind of confined to the hotel. In terms of the coaching and the restrictions and how this year was so different, how did that impact things? Um, it, you know, credit to the organization, it didn't impact us in that we couldn't get the players better. Obviously, we had to do it in different ways. More Zoom meetings, more phone calls. Um, you know, Holty would come back and forth from the sites. Kenny, uh, Kenny and I would, obviously, we were there this whole time. We were in the visitors' clubhouse with the pitchers. The position players were in the home side. So a lot of interaction with Kenny and I in our little office. The player came in. We had um, I had a second monitor set up on the other side of the room, so we could kind of show video without actually interacting. Or we did zooms while in the hotels, um, daily conversations with Holty and Kenny and I. So plenty of information exchanging uh, hands and and the conversations that we had led to um, keeping that going. So just had to come about it different ways. But again, hats off to the organization for coming up and providing the uh, the ability to do that for us. Wow, that that's challenging. Did that mean like if a pitcher is throwing a bullpen, you couldn't even physically be there next to him or near him as like you might normally, or could you? So we could. There's different tiers, um, which I'm sure you know about. And we, as tier one and tier two, we could be on the field. We just had to be in masks, and so we could be next to them for the bullpen, um, but we couldn't throw them a baseball if one got away, or if they used a certain ball like a, a striped ball. Um, they had to put that off to the side and sanitize it and had to sit out for X amount of time. And so it was just different. You know, you're, you're accustomed to somebody getting loose or throwing their bullpen and you have a couple extra balls and you toss it to them and you just can't do that. So you want to try to help. And it's just second nature to, to go lean in and grab. You got to catch yourself and pull yourself. Sorry, man, you got you to gotta get help yourself. So you're there, but it's just very different. Wow. And, you know, organization-wide, there was such a push to stay healthy from Baltimore to Bowie and beyond that uh, I guess you guys could all feel the commitment from the organization and from each other. And then there's pressure on the individual. I don't want to be the guy <laughs> that messes this up. So I'm going to do the right thing here. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, it, it was made uh, pretty apparent from the beginning that we were taking things um, above and beyond. I would say what, I don't know what other organizations did, but I know what we did and it was top notch from, the time we stepped on the field at spring training 2.0 to buoy at the alternate site and all the way down. I, I would imagine everything's going like that at the uh, instructs down, down in Sarasota right now. So yeah, there was definitely a lot to, to keep an eye on, but again, the organization made it pretty clear and, you know, the internal um, coaching, if you will, the guys holding the regulations, keeping each other accountable. We didn't have any issues and it was, it was a credit to, to all of that. So the media, so I'll speak for the media as a group, we kind of put pitchers in one of two categories, whether this is fair or not. You were a young prospect like D.L. Hall. You are probably there for development. You weren't coming to Baltimore. 
you were a young pitcher like Keegan Aiken, you were trying to get to and help Baltimore, and he did. And so was instruction and work different for those categories of players? Um, no. I, to an extent, I would say no, but – Obviously, there's certain levels of coaching that you do with upper-level upper pitchers, and there's cer certain levels of coaching you do with lower level. You can't apply an attack plan that you need to get, you know, the Yankees out that you would talk to Grayson Rodriguez or Dia Hall about, who's only who have been in the AL or the sorry A ball level. And so that to me was the only real difference in terms of the attack plan going into our our sim games that day obviously there's a little bit more of an advanced approach to how we were going to sequence guys or what we were going to work on with particular guys uh the Akins and the Kramers you know <clears throat> and even the Zimmermans um as opposed to keeping more of a simplified approach to the younger guys that were there more for the development purposes that weren't going to be making an impact this year so I know fans are curious. I know I'm curious to hear about these young pitchers who have such promise. And one you work very closely with in Delmarva 2019 and Grayson Rodriguez. What a year he had. What a year your staff had. Um, what was the focus for Grayson this year? When you look at what he accomplished in 19, what was the focus for him at this camp? Um, just continuing to develop, trying to, you know, not that he just outstuffed guys every night, but he had the ability to to do that at the lower level. And obviously, as we continue to grow, you know, our philosophy is to develop um, and develop weapons to get big leaguers out. Like it's great that he had a, a big year in low A, and obviously well deserved, you know, accolations for him. But like we want him to get big leaguers out at the end of the day. And so we were, that was the focus was to get work and get development versus higher level hitters with higher level catchers that are working more advanced plans and keeping it in a range that he can understand and digest and not get overwhelmed with. Um, and so it was more focused on that. Uh, you know, there's always going to be subtle delivery things, not overhauls. You know, the stuff is the stuff. It's really good weapons. We don't need to do anything with that. Um, just get, get better feel, get our best weapons, our best locations. That's really what his, his goals were. And he did a really good job with that. How did he hold his own against the likes of Mountcastle and Adley and Diaz and others? Uh, I want to say Mountie made it up before Grayson got on the mound for the first time because he's okay. a later arrival. Um, but he and Adley have just a beautiful, friendly rivalry. They go back and forth, and there's it's definitely competitive when they get up there. Um, I know I, I, Grayson might not want to well, – excuse me, might not want me to say this, but I think Adley got him once or twice. Um, but, you know, Grayson got him a few times too. So it's going to be a fun rivalry as they go. And obviously the hope is they they, they ascend together and start um, punching some tickets and hitting some home runs for, for the, the big birds. Um, you know, Diaz, obviously a, a good hitter. Um, you know, when you're talking about those advanced guys, Grayson held his own. He really did. Um, it was fun to watch. He, you know, he took his lumps and then learned from them and made the adjustments when he needed to. And it, it was for what the season, quote unquote, was, I think he got as much as he could out of it. How about D.L. Hall? It was your first time, I guess, at, for a long period of time to be exposed to him and to work with him. Uh, what did you see? That was fun. Um, yeah, we had a little bit of interaction at spring training in the past, but obviously first time um, really working with him. Uh, that's obviously a special arm. Um, you know, there's, he, he's working on, um, you know, cleaning up the repeatability delivery to get on play more. And he did a good job of, of focusing on that. You know, there were times he went out there and maybe wasn't, um, as effective on the mound as he might've wanted to be, but he stuck to the process of working the delivery to get more strikes on plate. Like we always stress, like I just talked about race and best weapons through best locations. And he did that. And so um, it was good to see. You know, obviously, it'd be interesting to, to see what happens in a full season versus other teams. Does he get on a roll and kind of go on some, you know, one of the runs that kind of like, you know, in my experience, what Grayson went on last year? That's, you know, to be, to be determined. But I, obviously, that's in there. And we're very excited about uh, what, he can, what he can do for us in the future. Seems like scout after scout has praised his, his ability. Obviously, it's how he got to be a first-round draft pick. The walk rate people would nitpick is too high last year. Were there some things you guys did that could help that this year? 
Um, that was part of the, the, the delivery work, if you will. It's just getting something a little more repeatable, getting a consistent um, rhythm and timing to the delivery. And hopefully that allows him to have a better feel out of the hand, which will get him on plate a little bit more. I mean, one thing with the walks, I, I think you'll notice throughout the organization, I know they talked about it with Keegan, like he was working on things. And so the walks went up. Um, you know, Grayson probably walked more than he should have, but he was working on things that are going to help him, mm -hmm. you know, execute at the highest level. Uh, obviously, Del, DL has some of that going on where he's working on things and he's throwing pitches he might not normally have. So, um, yeah, obviously the walks are a little higher, but I think there's there's growth that's going on while that's happening. And so it's all part of the process. And that's what we're here to do is to trust the process. The delivery things you worked on, was it some changes you made, tweaks? How would you characterize it? Um, tweaks, more just, you know, rhythm and timing, direction, nothing major. It's not an overhaul. You're not going to look at them next year and go, whoa, that's totally, no, it's just more of a consistent rhythm throughout and keeping things online. The guy we've heard a lot of good things about, but I haven't seen yet, obviously, but you did, is Kyle Bradish or Bradish? I'm not sure which is right. Bradish, as far as I Bradish. know. Bradish. Okay, <laughs> yeah. thank you. Uh, and he came in the trade, the Dylan Bundy deal from the Angels organization, promising uh, a pitcher. What What did you like about him? What are your thoughts? Um, there's nothing not to like. He's a phenomenal human. I mean, all these kids are really. It was Again, you go back to the chemistry of the camp, a bunch of good guys that were there to work. Uh, Bradish was no exception. Showed up, obviously, a little later um, as we came in waves. But in shape, ready to go, strong, physical kid. Um, you, like different delivery in terms of uh, maybe what you're used to seeing, higher arm slot, but that's okay because it works and it works well for him. We're certainly not trying to take anything away. Um, going back to best weapons through best locations, he can do that. And it's, it, was, it was fun to watch. You know, it was fun to be a part of, um, you know, first time really him in the organization and his first real experience. So it was, it was an honor to be a part of that. Well, man, good things were happening at Bowie this year. There's no doubt about it. Had to be fun to be a part of that. Had to be fun to see those guys go to the Orioles and have success. I'm sure that was a lift for everybody at the Bowie camp. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, they, those guys really worked hard. Um, they were they showed up determined. They, they knew what they needed to do. Uh, the conversations were had with Holty and obviously from the top down uh, with, with those guys. And then the work was put in and, you know, all three of them showed up there and showed flashes of what they were capable of and, and dominated at times. And it was really, it was fun to watch, you know, especially you get home from you know, the alternate site and you throw on the, the game on Masson and you're watching the guys that were literally just in the same yard as you almost a day ago for some of them. And even the hitters, you know, hats off to those guys. They all, you know, guys came down and worked and went back up and they performed. It was, it was awesome. Well, Justin, congrats on concluding your second season in the Oral organization with more to come. And I, uh, Really appreciate you taking some time today. Of course. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it.